We are here with Richard Noble and the Bloodhound SSC. How are you today, Richard? I am absolutely fine. It's the start of a very long and uh, intense day. I really enjoy these days because we meet an enormous number of people and it's great fun. Yeah. Excellent. So thank you for joining us on FGear. Tell us about the Bloodhound and uh, what you're looking to achieve. Well, this is the most extraordinary project of all. I mean, it really is. Uh, the, what we set out to do was it looked as though the Americans basically were going to take away our supersonic land speed record from 1997. So. Um, we thought about it, Andy Green and I thought about it, and we decided what we'd try and do is to build one, a challenger. Unfortunately, the American challenge never actually emerged into anything, so uh, that's gone. But in the meantime, we wanted to build the ultimate car, absolutely the ultimate car. And uh, what we needed was a Eurofighter engine. And uh, we had a meeting with Lord Drayson, uh, who was then the minister responsible for the MOD, and um, one thing led to another. We actually did end up with our Eurofighter engine. But Drayson came up with this really clever idea, which was that simply we ought to um, use the project um, as an inspiration for the schools, because within the Ministry of Defence they had a huge problem. They couldn't recruit engineers. And later on, as we discover, nobody could recruit engineers because there aren't any engineers. I mean, it's an extraordinary situation. So, uh, and back, Drayson's idea was that back in the 1960s, um, when we had a fantastic aerospace industry that was creating things like Concorde and the TSR2 and the Harrier and so on, that, um, you know, um, we never had a problem in terms of supply of engineers because basically all the kids were turned on in the schools. So his idea was to create an iconic project and run it through all the schools in order to create a new generation of engineers. So we started doing the research on all this, and uh, it became absolutely amazing because we're the only people in the world who can actually do this because um, all the um, organizations with really exciting products, like, for instance, Defense, uh, Space, Formula One, etc., they all have to live in a world of complete and utter secrecy. But because the land speed record rules simply state the car must have four or more wheels and be driven by the driver, okay, it is all about complete, com um, uh, creating an absolutely unique ultimate vehicle. And, of course, therefore, if that's the case, then you start to transfer uh, your technology. It doesn't help the competitor. That being the case, you make all the technology available. So that's what we're doing. And at the moment, we've got 4,000 schools on the program now. Wow. It's getting absolutely massive. Fantastic. That, that really is. So what kind of speeds are we, are we looking to see? Well, of course, the thing about it is if you're really going to do this properly, then you've got to set out to produce the ultimate uh, in, uh, iconic project. And, and never to be broken. And never to be broken, <laughs> exactly that. And so therefore, you know, just breaking the land speed record by 10% or so, which is the normal game, uh, is no good. So this time it's a 30%. So what is it at the moment for our FGV viewers? So 763 is the thrust SSC record. And now we're moving on to Mach 1.4, which is 1,000 miles an hour. Wow. Wow. And uh, so we have a hell of a car, which we're just into build now. It's uh, basically it's 135,000 horsepower. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So none of those little Bugatti Veyrons or Formula One cars. This is a <laughs> serious man's car, this. Right. Okay. And um, it's jet and rocket powered. It's powered by the uh, EJ200 Eurofighter engine. We've got three of those. And it's... Uh, you say three of those? Three of those, yeah. Three we got, of them. Yeah, right. we're not going to use three of those, but we have two for oh, spare. Oh, so yeah. three, three on at the same time. <laughs> you, you might... You might well, get 3,000 miles an hour. <laughs> and then we've got uh, the Falcon rocket motor, which we're developing as well. That goes with it. The rocket motor is more powerful than the EJ200 engine. Okay. And, uh, and it's a very complex vehicle. It really is. But it, the fascinating thing about it is that when it runs, um, it's going to download directly onto the web 500 uh, channels of data each time it runs. So we've got to produce an online academy, education academy so people understand all the data. Oh, wow. So it's really amazing, and people are going to learn an awful lot from this. They really are. Well, yeah, it's amazing technology, and yeah, you're going to learn I mean, so much. Absolutely, and of course we're pushing the boundaries of what's possible. We're right out on our own because the uh, aerospace industry really can't help us. They don't do cars, and Formula One, of course, is uh, you know around 200 miles an hour, so that's not really much good for this. So we're right out on our own. The technology for what we're doing just doesn't exist. So the driver is Andy Green. Absolutely. And yep. uh, can you tell us a little bit about Andy's background? Andy is terrific. Andy is, uh, well, he's a fighter pilot. That's where he, where he came from. He's got 3,000 hours of uh, fast jet time. 
Um, he joined the Thrust SSC project when we were looking for a replacement driver, because from my point of view, I had to concentrate on making the money, so I lost out. And uh, 36 people applied for the, the role. We went through a six-month um, evaluation, which Andy won. And, and, of course, he ended up getting uh, not only the world land speed record, but also he's got the world diesel record with the JCB Diesel Max car as well. How fast was that? Uh, 350 miles an hour. Okay. Yeah, that, that's a bit of a walk in the park, that one. <laughs> <laughs> not too bad. <laughs> so uh, here we go, and uh, it's a fascinating time right now because, uh, first of all, we've... Um, I uh, just sent the uh, first set of drawings across to Hampson, who are building the back end of the car. So they, they're just starting this month building the back end of the car. Right. We've got the, uh, the composite front end of the car in, in place now, so that's done. We've got all the engines and systems and everything else now, and it's just a big battle to get it all put together now. We reckon we'll have it probably about the, the middle of 2012. And that's when we're, we're going to be looked to actually... Do that record well we'll start um, right. but this is a very very complex car sure. I mean for instance in the middle of, of the car we've got a Cosworth uh, CA 2010 engine um, which uh, which actually drives the fuel pump for the rocket motor so we need 800 horsepower wow. just to drive the fuel pump and uh, it makes you gulp a bit but it's got to move a uh, what are we uh, one ton of high test peroxide from the uh, the main tank uh, into the rocket motor at 1100 psi in 17 seconds so you know there are some really spectacular numbers in this you you know fgear.tv we normally have a test drive of vehicles before they go on the road so uh... Uh, no we're not letting you loose on this one <laughs> No, that's fine. Uh, performance is very good. It's uh, obviously, as you might imagine, it's uh, not to a thousand in uh, 42 seconds. Um, <laughs> it's just made to a thousand. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And uh, acceleration is around 3G, which is right. space shuttle stuff. Pretty comfortable, that's yeah. all right. 3G is not to 66 in one second, not to 132 in two. And how are we, we going to stop? All right, okay, we come out of the measured mile, then we use air brakes. We've got two colossal air brakes on the side right. of the car. Uh, that, that we deploy those around about 800 miles an hour. Then we come down to the parachutes, and from the parachutes then into wheel brakes. So it's a three-stage braking right. system. Very and complex. Uh, we've got to be able to do the whole thing in 10 miles and 100 seconds. And round, round at the top speed, we're going through, uh, we're going along, covering a mile in 3.6 seconds, <laughs> and it's four point, four and a half football pitches per second at that speed. Wow. <laughs> it's quite difficult to get your head round those. Yeah, spots. well, and it's all British, remember. This is the great thing, it's all British. Do you want to talk about costs? Yeah, sure. Um, it's very interesting. Um, to give an idea, um, when we did the Thrust SSC project, the, um, uh, the, the main thing, the main value for the sponsors, of course, is in terms of the web following, because that's people actually making an actual uh, at, uh, effort to get in and, dis and learn about it, rather than just televisions running in a corner of a room somewhere, you know. So that's what it's, what it, what it's really about. And when we did Thrust SSC, we did... Um, uh, 59 million visits in the year in 1997, which equates to 300 million pages per annum. And this one, with our sponsor Intel, we're going for one, well, sorry, for three billion pages per annum. And at the moment, it's being run through uh, 203 countries, so it's getting very big already. Wow. That's, so, uh, you know, it really is, uh, it's going to have a hell of a heck, this project. <laughs> most definitely, most definitely. And where are you actually running it? What, uh, we're gonna, we've got a desert. We've been given our own desert. Oh, that's not which too is, bad. Which is great, yeah. Not in Las Vegas, <laughs> is it? I'll come along. No, no, sadly not, not this time. Um, we've, um, we've had problems in the U.S. because the traditional site, the Black Rock Desert, has, um, it's got a bit dusty now and the surface is all gone, so uh, that's no good. And we've got a wonderful desert called Hackskeen Pan in South Africa, which is about 800 kilometers north of Cape Town. We've got a uh, 12 mile track there, which is brilliant. Uh, at the moment, we've got 300 people on the desert picking up all the stones. Uh, <laughs> and right. we've had to remove 1.6 kilometers of road. Uh, but that's all been done now. And so they're getting it ready. And we'll be out there 2012. And I, th I think this will probably finish off in 2013, but it may, may stray longer. Richard, can we go around the car? And yeah, absolutely, we can. Okay, well, let's walk up to the front. So if we start off at the front here, this is obviously the nose of the car, and uh, we, we aren't actually showing the pitot, but there, is a, there will be a pitot head on the front there, which measures the uh, dynamic pressure, the oncoming air, which gives us an, uh, the, our airspeed, 
We move further down the car here. We've got the canard wings at the front. Uh, the aerodynamics of the car are simply so good that um, the, uh, the engineers don't actually think we need the wings, but um, we are going to put them in together with all the systems. So these are just little trimmers um, designed to make sure that uh, we've got a constant load on the front wheels. The thing about it is that the aerodynamic loads increase as a, as a square of the speed. So, f you know, if you're not careful, you can get loads of 20 tonnes or so on the front axle, so you've got to be very careful. And then, of course, you've got the, the Lockheed Martin wheels at the front there. Nice coil spring suspension. You've got Andy's cockpit there the big intake here and of course the great thing about the cockpit here is that this is acting as a kind of center body and it's creating the shock wave so the shock wave comes off the top here and goes just past the intake lip there so that slows down the airflow going into the jet engine and that's very important because the jet engine doesn't like uh, supersonic airflow uh, right from here to about here We've got the big tank, um, and that's a high-test peroxide tank carrying one ton of H2O2, high-test peroxide. So we've got a, a ton? Of, a ton, yes, wow. yeah. So you can imagine it creates quite a structural problem because we've got a ton of uh, fuel right in the middle of the car, so it's tending to bend the car a bit. And, of course, we've got a long, thin car, so there's uh, quite a problem in terms of getting it torsionally strength, strong enough. Behind that, we've got the, uh, the Cosworth engine, the CA2010, CA and that drives the fuel pump. Uh, for the rocket, and that then powers, uh, takes the high-test peroxide through into the rocket motor at the back. And then you've got the intake continuing here, and then you've got the start of the EJ200 uh, jet engine there. Um, around here we've got a fuel tank here of uh, 5,500 litres of jet fuel. And then we move towards the back end of the car, and uh, this becomes really interesting because the key to the whole thing is this little delta wing here, which you can see here. It looks like a bit of suspension, but in point of fact, it's an, uh, it's an aerodynamic device. And what that does is it stops the supersonic shock wave migrating under the back of the car at high Mach numbers. You're dealing with very high pressures here, and uh, if it gets under the back of the car, it can lift the back of the car right off. And we've, on some of our development work, um, CFD work, we spent 750,000 quid on CFD. And with that, uh, we found, you know, you can get about 12 tons of lift if you're not careful. And then this extraordinary shape around the fairing, around the back of the, the wheels. Again, everything's aerodynamic. There's no, there's no styling on this thing at all. Everything's designed for a reason. Absolutely. Yeah. It, absolutely. So, um, again, this is designed to minimize the drag around the wheel. And it makes it very, if you come further around the back, it makes it very vulnerable because, of course, we've got an enormous amount of energy coming out the jet engine exhaust and the rocket engine exhaust. So we've got a problem here because it's going to beat the hell out of those fairings. So those fairings, the back-end fairings, will have to be replaceable. And we, you know, we've got an enormous amount of energy. I mean, there's 135,000 horsepower here, and, you know, we'll be in excess of 175 decibels of noise. What kind of material is, is the... Uh, the is it made out of? Um, well, basically, at the back end of the car is um, a steel structure with an aluminium skin. So very conventional at the back end. The front end is all carbon composite. Right. So that, that's, how, that's kind of how it works. So it's quite a beast. And this is the rocket motor, of course, the Falcon rocket motor. And we'll get 160 feet of flame out the back of that. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so we can have a barbecue around the back. <laughs> I think a bit more of the barbecue. <laughs> So that's it, really. And then, of course, you've got the wing and the, uh, the, the, the fin and the tailplane. The fin is going to change slightly. We're going to increase the fin area slightly. And, uh, the, um, and the fin is always the last bit that you design on something like this because it's all about the stability of the car. And then you, 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 you fine-tune the stability by just adjusting the fin area. So we are going to increase the fin area. Now, what's interesting about the fin is you can see the uh, Union Jack there. And that's made up of signatures. All right, okay. and we can get 80,000 signatures. They're, they're, they're not Would very you like big. Mine? Yeah, absolutely. It costs <laughs> you 10 quid. <laughs> so everything goes into funding this thing. And it's great because it's all British yeah. and it just shows what we can do in Britain, you know, if we really set our minds to it. Richard, tell us how the British public can support you. Well, it's all about money, of course. It's all about money. And it's a huge fight because we don't do these big projects very well in Britain. I mean, if it was in France, you know, basically the government would be in and everybody would be helping out. But uh, we don't do this. Actually, I'm, I'm rather happy doing it this way because I, I don't like the sort of, you know, the government leading the place or project or, uh, you know, etc. So we're, we're completely independent. So it's a huge fight. Money is absolutely everything. And at the moment, the costs are running at £225,000 every month okay and uh, we've got to get through this build 
And it's very interesting now because the big brands are coming forward. It's very interesting. Now, are they going to be brave enough to do this thing? Well, we're going to find out, aren't we? We are. We are. Well, I'm sure everything will work out and everyone will get behind you. Yeah. And, uh, we'll, you'll achieve exactly what you want to achieve. Well, we just want people to go into the, uh, the Blood Hunt website, bloodhuntssc.com. Go and have a look and put your name on the phone. It only costs 10 quid. And uh, we don't even have to pay VAT on it. And that's really good. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Thank you so much.